Tekken can be an overwhelming game as a beginner player, with over 30 characters, hundreds of matchups and thousands of moves, it can be understandable how you get a bit of choice paralysis and just end up mashing instead of learning your character. It doesn't have to be this way, especially for a beginner player, so what I'm going to do is teach you how you can select any character, spend 30 minutes to an hour learning, and feel like you have a solid foundation for taking that character online. So choose a character and boot up practice mode. The first thing I want you to realise is that you have a time limit for how long I want you to spend here, and that's 30 minutes to an hour. If you are to take away one thing from this video, is that to learn how to play a character or Tekken in general, you need to play against someone. After a maximum of an hour, we're going to play a match. Ideally, we want to identify the strengths and weaknesses of our character and form a game plan around those that benefit our style but it's very difficult as a beginner because you won't know what your character is good at. You can look elsewhere online to find this out, but I'll show you how you can learn this stuff later on yourself. Tekken 8 does an okay job of highlighting the main techniques that your character should use, and it's a decent place to start in training mode. Many of the heat engager attacks are actually just strong moves that the developer have tied the mechanic to, to further shepherd people to using those attacks. I'm specifically looking for a few good moves that are attached to a few important categories. Quick, safe poking attacks, key lows, a powerful whiff punisher, we need some key punishment options, a good space controlling move, I like a panic move, my character's key move if I can find it in the time, and lastly, a very basic juggle and wall combo. Let's get started. A poking attack is incredibly important for a few reasons. It's fast, therefore it can be used quickly without a long startup animation, and it's safe, which minimises risk if it's blocked. Pokes can have a small or medium range, and are generally pretty solid up to 13 frames of startup animation. We want to use our pokes to check our opponent often, so they don't just get to do whatever they want. Therefore, this is going to be our most important move. Thankfully, almost every character, sorry Jack, has one of the best pokes in the game in their one jab. The one jab is generally the fastest move in the game, and even if they block it, we still get to act first. Next up, I know that down forward one is an amazing poke on many characters. It's fast, it's safe, and it has string extensions for follow-ups. So two of your pokes are generally automatically sorted. If you really struggle to find one more, generally down forward four is a pretty good one for most characters. In Tekken, the preferred guarding stance is a standing guard, since it defends against highs and mids, which are both abundant throughout the move list and are generally the most threatening categories. Therefore, to give your opponent a reason to switch off the guarding stance, we need to hit them with some lows. Broadly speaking, I like to categorize lows as either poking lows or threatening lows. Poking lows will annoy your opponent, and when used a few times over the duration of a round, will begin to rack up some meaningful damage. A threatening low is an attack we want to have that will instill fear into our opponent, adding to their mental stack in defending against us, and will hopefully produce two new outcome paths. Either they don't block low and we just obliterate them with this strong attack, or they begin blocking low and we start landing our strong mids. Most characters have a few generic lows with the likes of down 3 or down 4. I do wish that the main techniques tab showed us a few more key lows, but we can find them ourselves. Look for two quick lows that we can use to bother our opponent, and now we'll start searching for our threatening low. This threatening low may be slower or riskier when it's blocked. It should either do a bit of damage, lead to an advantageous state, or preferably both. Think of Hell Sweep for Machimas, Down 3 for Lee, or Crouch Dash Shoulder for Fang. You may be aware of a concept called a Snake Edge, which is named after one of Brian's strong lows, which is a very slow attack that leads into a combo. I usually urge people to avoid these moves because once you get past low ranks, everyone and their dog can observe it and block it. But even I catch people and get caught by one every so often, so it's good to know if your character has one. The Whiff Punisher is my favourite type of attack and in my opinion is the last essential type of attack that I want you to find. I believe it's more important than learning any combos and you get more value out of these attacks for the effort that you put in. 
From the lowest rank through to the highest, a very solid game plan is to create space for yourself either through a backdash or a pushback move and then let your opponent whiff an attack and then finally strike them back when they're stuck in the recovery animation. A whiff punisher generally requires some decent range, moderate speed and a strong effect on connecting. This can be a good chunk of damage, a knockdown or possibly a launcher on standard hit or counter hit. Look for a similar move to incorporate into your game plan and focus on backdashing a mashing opponent and then capitalizing on their whiff with these attacks. Every character has a preferred range that they ideally want to be playing at, which can change depending on the matchup. While some characters have amazing keep out attacks, I feel it's always important to have one in the back pocket when you're playing against a heat timer, certain matchups, and running out the clock. Creating space with a backdash and then throwing out a safe long range attack can be a good way to frustrate your opponent into making overly aggressive plays which you can capitalize on. Opposite this, sometimes you just need to get in on your opponent and it's really giving you grief to approach. Here you want to find a move that carries your character forward quickly and safely, something that you can use at mid range that will leave you right at their doorstep without a huge disadvantage. A classic example is Dragonoff's while running 2, but I also use moves like Lee's back 1-1 one, one mix-up to approach as sometimes it doesn't have to be the most obvious move. I know that when I'm playing a new character, I'm going to be overwhelmed and get stun locked in terms of what to do. So if my brain melts under pressure, I like to have a move that I can use as my get out of jail free card. This can be something like a backswing blow or a similar evasive attack or it may be something extremely fast that can upset the flow of battle. Many characters have access to the crouch jab that will evade high attacks and get you back into the fight. These attacks shouldn't be relied on too much as they are normally decently punishable if misused, but they can be a good way to get a foothold when under pressure. As much as I don't want to overload you as a beginner, you should have some punishment options in your pocket. I have a beginner guide that touches on frame data and then I have an older video that completely explains the concept if you want to watch it. But quickly speaking, if your opponent uses a move that is so slow to recover and you block it, you can strike them back before they can even get their guard up. This occurs at 10 frames and onwards where frames are just a way to speak about time in the game. I want you as a beginner to focus on only a few frame thresholds rather than all of them and that is 10 frames. 12 or 13 frames, and 15 frames. The reason I want to do this is because many attacks will end up leaving the opponent negative 10 or 11 frames on block, and we can just use our jab string to punish this. Next you can pick 12 or 13 frames, whatever is better for you and your character, to punish this new frame threshold. Look for attacks that either do quite a bit of damage, or do something like knock down, or lead into a powerful stance. Lastly, look for your 15 frame punisher, which will hopefully launch the opponent. Most members of the cast can do a hop kick with up forward 4 or launch with down forward 2. After this, we also need to get your wild rising punishers. As a beginner, just get your 12 or 13 frame punisher along with a launch punisher, because I don't want to overwhelm you too much. These will be utilized when you block a low attack. Thankfully, your hop kick will also double up as a wild rising punisher if you want to use it. If you don't know which punishment option to use in battle, use the quickest option that you have and then ramp up the punishment on supplementary efforts until it stops working. I am a firm believer that juggle combos and wall combos are the least productive thing for people to spend their time on when learning a new character. Most characters have a combo that deals 60 or so damage they can do perfectly fine. Sure, it's generally far and away from optimal, but scraping 5 more damage together with hours of optimal combo pathways really seems like a future issue. If you want to spend some time here after playing online, go for it as it's something really fun to do, but for now we just need a basic combo. Feel free to look at the sample combos as a place to start and see what a basic combo looks like. I want you to carry the simplicity over to our wall combos as well, where I just want you to find your hardest hitting string and use it on your opponent when at the wall. Lastly, I want to talk about our key moves. Tekken does an okay job of tying heat engages to some really good attacks that you'll want to prioritize, 
but it does miss some things, or maybe I just use Lee's back four way too much. This is where practice mode hits its first main wall. You don't know as a beginner what a really good move is. Sure, you know what an okay poke is and an alright punishment option is, but it's hard to look at a move on paper and try to envision the usage in a match. This is where you'll not only need to play people and see what works, but also watch other people play. Thankfully in Tekken 8, there is a replay system that not only allows you to watch your own matches back, but also allows you to watch sets of other players. I would greatly encourage you to watch a few matches of higher ranked players that play the character that you're learning and see what moves they're using often and wonder why they might be doing so. Something tells me if Dragonoffs are constantly using this move, you should be too. Now that we've got all of that under our belt, it's time to play some games. I would implore you to play against another human being, whether it be offline, player matches or ranked. Arcade mode and ghosts are fine, and if that's all you really want to do, then go nuts. But nothing is close to the mind games and strategies of playing against a real opponent. So when we choose our character and go online, especially if you are new to the game, you should expect to lose. So drop your ego, you're setting a new baseline with an unknown character. I want you to remember the different attacks and categories that we laid out and use these moves with purpose. Over time, you'll build muscle memory regarding what button should be pressed at what time, and you'll be able to transfer your concentration from your own character onto your opponent, and that's when the real learning begins. Thanks for watching, all my subscribers and any new subscribers will receive a month long buff to learning a brand new character. Whether it be someone you think you'll get a higher rank with, or someone who looks like a lot of fun, you'll be able to learn them just that extra bit faster. Bye.